G'day fellow mappers, it's Joe Sweeney here from Story Weaver Games. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to put a scale and some grids onto our map. Now the map by now should be looking absolutely stunning. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way this one's coming up. I'm sure that you are also very excited by the way your map is starting to look. But without a scale, a map is meaningless. It doesn't convey much information. So there's there's a couple of different ways that you can add scale to a map, and I like to use all of them. But the first way is to add a, a square grid to the map, and we're going to do that very, very shortly. The second way is to use a hex grid, which is used a lot more in wargaming. Personally, I love hex grids. I just, I just think they, they make it feel much more old school, and I really like that. So we're going to do that too. But obviously, we wouldn't want to see our hex grid and our square grid at the same time. That would be very confusing. And the third thing that you need to put on there is a scale bar, uh, and that's absolutely essential. Now, we're going to put the grids on first. To add a grid, the very first thing you must do is select the color of the grid that you want to lay down. <clears throat> For this map, I'm going to make it a, um, a, a darkish brown color, like so. So there, I, I've got that. Now, come up to the draw tool here. This is the way I normally draw my grids. I think it's the fastest way. Click on draw and then come down to grid. Hex or square overlay. That's what we want right there. Now it's asking us uh, some details about what it's going to draw on our behalf. I would like to start with a square grid. I do not want to use labelings, so definitely turn those off. And then it's asking how big would our grid spacing want to be. Now, um, this is just really a matter of feel. By default, this map has given us 20. So for every square, that is 20 miles. I'm going to accept that. Um, some people like to use 50, some 25. It's really up to you and how you want your map to look. But let's just take a, let's, let's see what happens when we do this. Click on apply. Bingo, there's our square grid. Now let's refresh that. It's a little bit overpowering, isn't it? Don't worry, we're going to use the magic of sheets to change how overpowering this is. If you click on the sheets command now, you'll scroll down and you'll find a grid here. So click on this. And what we're now going to do is add a special effect. So if you, in fact, let me just prove to you that this, that this um, grid is actually on there. So I'm going to click off that. I'm going to hide that grid and you'll see that our grid disappears. So the sheet that was automatically selected when we drew that grid line down was grid. But now we're going to modify that. I'm gonna click add. I'm going to click transparency and I'm gonna drop this down to 50% transparency as a starting point. And then I'm gonna click on okay. Now you can see the grid is much, much softer. I would like to take it down even a little bit more so again, come here, click on this, transparency special effect, click on edit, and I'm gonna take it down to say 30%. And I'm also going to add a slight blur to this. So I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna click on blur, and I'm gonna make the blur units maybe two. Let's just try two for the moment. And uh, not a percentage of the width actually in map units. And that's important because the new effects allow you to actually alter that effect depending on how the map is being viewed, what, what, resol what resolution. In this particular case, I want it to be an absolute. There you go. Now you can see that our square grid on our map looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that looks really pro style. So there's our first grid line. Now, what about the hex? Well, this is where things get cunning. I'm going to now click on my layers here, and I'm going to find my hex and square grid layer here, which is currently set to fixed. That's okay. I am going to add a new layer, and I'm gonna call it square grid only, okay? Um, that, new grid area is going to be where I actually place the layer for 
this grid. So I click on the grid that I've currently drawn. I right click. So I've only got that one thing selected, just one. Make sure you're only selecting the grid. And then I'm going to change its sheet instead of, oh, sorry, not a sheet, its layer instead of being uh, its default, which would have been the hex square grid. I'm going to move it down to square grid only. Now, the reason for that is I've now isolated this grid line to its own layer. And that means if I don't want to see the square grid anymore, square grid only, I can use this command here, oops, in the middle there to hide it. And then I can turn it back on whenever I want by clicking on that again and unhiding it. Pretty slick, huh? So let me go back to there and oops, where is that square grid only? And I'm going to hide that. Okay, now let's put on the hexagonal grid that we want. So I'm going to go draw, hex or square overlay. I want this one to be a hex grid, horizontal. I don't want labeling. Now, I think that this grid is going to have to be much bigger. And the reason for that is hex grids can be very, very bitsy if they're too small. So I'm going to actually make it 50 and I'm going to apply it. That's absolutely what I wanted to see. If I refresh that, because it is on the grid sheet, it's inheriting all of those drawing capabilities of that grid sheet. And of course, if I want to now swap between the square grid only, I can just turn that one off, turn that one on, bingo. So that's looking great. Now I've got an ability to change when I output this map, whether it's a square grid or whether it's a um, hexagonal grid. The next thing I'm going to do now is drop on the, uh, the, the, very, the third and last thing, which is the scale. To do this, I'm first of all going to right click on the grid command, and I'm not going to have this selected on the user grid, hex grid. And the reason for that, the reason why that is there is because I just added a hex grid. So it, it's, it's, it's created that for me. I'm going to make it to a um, 50 mile, uh, 20 mile one snap. In other words, that's the same as the previous grid line that we put in there. I'm going to go and fetch my um, scale bar. Now, it's not immediately obvious where you go and get those from, but every time a template is loaded into Campaign Cartographer, uh, it will bring in some predefined symbols, and they can be found by clicking on this button here, which shows you all of the available symbols. Here's the one that we want. I'm going to click on that one and bring it into my map. And let's zoom in so I can figure out where I want to put that. There you go. Let's think about what the scale of this map is going to be. Generally, these scales are bought in at 100 miles for an overland map. And we can check that because we've got the soft grid line there. We can see that there's one, two, three, four, five. It stretches across five of those grid lines. And guess what? Each of those are 20 miles. So yes, this, this um, scale is in fact 100 miles. So I'm going to make sure that I make that scale is 100. When I now redraw that, we've got our scale of 100 miles. I'll come on out. Now, while I'm here, I might as well put on a beautiful um, rosette. I think for this map, I'm going to use that one. And you can either leave it pointing straight up or you can turn it at a slight angle. I just want mine straight up. Whoops. So there we go. By the way, the, what the, hit, the way that I was rotating that was holding down the shift key. Remember that little feature, holding down the shift key? It lets you rotate while you place something onto the map. Bingo. So we now have our grids for our maps and we've got our scale for our map. Now what I'd like you to do is go to your map and create a square grid for the map then go into the sheets and modify that so that it is slightly transparent and slightly blurred. And just mess around with those settings a little bit until you get the type of grid line that you want for your map. Um, the next thing that I'd like you to do is uh, move that grid line to its own layer, a square grid only layer, so that you can turn it on and off again, and then add a hex grid to your map. Um, finally, add the compass and add the scale bar. 
Now in the next tutorial, um, once you've done that, come, and, <laughs> come back. In the next tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about laying down text all over your map. And that is actually quite an advanced tutorial. Certainly it's got more detail than this one. So looking forward to seeing you then.